Hey guys, it's Danny. So, are you ready to talk about another orchid disease? Well, here we go. Today we're gonna discuss about Fusarium. What is Fusarium? Well, I'll link you down below to some more extensive explanations, but basically Fusarium is a fungal disease. It's a fungal infection that affects orchids. And it's a pretty nasty one because it can be lethal. So a little background. I'll add right here in an info card a video that Anna made with some orchids that she ordered and had Fusarium. It's quite easy to tell if an orchid has Fusarium. The first symptoms are lack of vigorousness, roots that are acting weird, leaf blight and so on. On. So practically the orchid does not perform as you would expect without any particular reason. And the conclusive sign is cutting the rhizome and finding a purple circle around it. Now I was talking to Anna in private about her problem and as she discovered she had multiple orchids infected because this disease can spread and what better way to spread it than to splash water and letting it drop on all of your orchids. So she went through a bit of a crisis and I felt really bad for her but also I have this particular orchid in mind. Now, if you don't remember or don't recognize this one, it is the CG Robling. This one never performed spectacular for me, ever. So if you remember last year I did a video on it, on its roots, they always seem to get stained, the root tips start to die off, she never creates a big, big root system. Also, we had a problem with this leaf. In one of my videos, I was showing you that this leaf keeps getting infected without any particular reason. At the time I thought it was the sap and in all honesty it might have been the sap that caused it but it always continued. You can see I have some weird spotting. I also had a weird spot on this leaf which appeared out of nowhere but it does look like a sort of a fungal disease to me but it didn't spread so I didn't think much of it. However, the other day I just decided to do something about this orchid and check it for Fusarium because she really did not do well, so I suspected there was something very wrong with her. So I cut the rhizome yesterday. Not sure if it's gonna show up that well today. I'll show you some pictures if it doesn't. So, okay, here we go. Let's focus on this. Given this is a little bit dry, I cut it yesterday because I just couldn't wait anymore. Do you see the purplish ring around the rhizome? Alrighty, maybe this is more visible. In case it doesn't, I'm just gonna show you the pictures that I took yesterday when this rhizome was fresh. So in the pictures you can clearly see there is a purple distinct ring around the rhizome. And if you do a little bit of research, you will see that's pretty much the definite sign of a Fusarium infection. As opposed to this, a normal and healthy rhizome should look something like this. Don't be fooled by the slightly brown ring around it. That might be caused by the sheaths because some rhizomes do have some sheaths. But anyway, you can see there's a clear difference between an infected orchid and a healthy orchid. So, what do we do now? Well, first of all, we need to separate this orchid, but I personally won't be very, very drastic about it because this disease only spread if you're absolutely not careful with your orchids, and I am a bit paranoid. And actually, some orchids, depending on the individual, can cope and can live with this disease. They will not perform great, they might not bloom so well, but they can survive. And I'm willing to give this orchid a chance on my terrace, so this will be an experiment to see if orchids can actually live in Cyprus climate, as well if orchids can live with Fusarium and how they will perform, because this orchid is trying to survive. However, the roots, the roots will probably never ever grow to their full potential. Now, because it is a fungus, theoretically it could be healed. I'm not sure how just yet, I might try out some stuff, but as long as it's not a virus, it's okay. But just be careful you don't spread it. So let's talk about how not to spread infections and all of that. Well, first rule, always, always, always sterilize your cutting tools. This is the major vector through which disease are spread. Second major thing, never, ever, ever share water. No matter how little time you have, if you care about some orchids in your collection, you might want to water those separately because there are so, so, so many things that can spread through sharing water, not only disease, but also pests, snails, even spider mites. If they fall in the water, they get into another pot. There you go, infestation with spider mites. If you can't really use different waters for all of your orchids, at least try to create groups and use the same water for only a group of orchids. In case there is an outbreak, 
with a group, you know there's something wrong with only that group, but not with everybody else. Third of all, don't splash water. Yeah, I know it's really easy to hose orchids down, especially if you're in a greenhouse, but it's not necessarily the most healthy thing you can do with your orchids. Water dripping down from an orchid to another orchid can obviously infect it. And if I'm not mistaken, this is how Anna managed to spread this disease through a lot of her orchids. And fourth, try to keep your orchids pest free. Pests that create bruises on the leaves and so on can definitely transport this disease. Not only this, but viruses as well. So as much as you can, try to be on top of a pest infestation. I'm not necessarily the one to talk about this because I'm struggling with spider mites, but yeah. Luckily, spider mites are not vectors for many, many things because they're just so tiny, but stuff like aphids and thrips can definitely be vectors for viruses and fungal infections and bacterial infections. And other than that, just some pretty common sense, I would say, hygiene routine, like if you're using gloves with your orchids, when you're finished with an orchid, just remove the gloves, throw them away, get another pair of gloves. It might be an expense, but maybe in the long run it might save you money if you have an infected orchid which is capable of infecting all of your collection. And your collection is a little bit more expensive than gloves. And of course, quarantine. If you can quarantine your orchids, then do so, although Honestly, I don't think this can spread all that easily unless there is water involved. So yeah, just some pretty common sense safety measurements you can take. And pretty much that's it. So if you ever have an orchid that simply does not perform okay for whatever reason and you have a back bulb, which you can cut the rhizome off, cut it and look for that ring. If there is a ring, there's your answer. So on one hand, I'm glad that I kind of figured out why some orchids simply don't do well no matter what we do. But on the other hand, I absolutely love this orchid. To me, it's a pretty rare orchid and I really care for it a lot. I don't want to throw this away. I will not throw this away, but I really hope it can, you know, cope with her disease because it's pretty obvious she is a disease. She will never be vigorous and yeah, I'll just have to be very careful around her. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you learned something new. Check the description for more information. And if you'd like to see more good videos, simply subscribe to my channel. I post on a daily basis. Also, feel free to leave me comments down below if you have questions or suggestions for videos. And always feel free to send me a letter at the address you see on the screen and in the description below. Choose an option on the screen if you'd like to visit my website orchidnature.com or watch another orchid video. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.